Hi Chris. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm good, thank you for having a chat. Not a problem at all, happy to be here. Do you have a new EP out? Yes, it just came out last Friday, it's called Lipstick. It's uh, the best EP you'll ever hear in your life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can vouch for that because it is very good. So you think it's the best EP you'll ever hear in your life? Recently, yeah. Recently? So far. Not ever. So far, no, yeah. Okay. So far, I'll give you it. I'll give you it for now. What was the writing process and stuff? How did, how did it form? Uh, we started writing it a year ago. Uh, we wrote and recorded a song called Talking Aloud with Mark Morrow in Edinburgh. We uh, released that in August. And then uh, that was kind of, we put that out there as a kind of taster. End of the year we released the music video for that, uh, just to kind of keep things tidying over. Uh, then we wrote and recorded two more songs, Colours and Stop Go. Uh, we released Colours at the start of the year to keep things going still. There's still more coming. And then um, we recorded Lipstick with Liam McCluskey at Morse Code Management to because um, we wanted another song that was like it was just a bit more than other or other songs. Um, we, we, don't, we wanted to put more production, something more behind our songs. So we, we spoke to Liam and we we got what we got basically, <laughs> and uh, we did it. Yeah, and um, uh, we got four great sounded great tracks that sound great together yeah. basically. So. What made you pick Lipstick as the the lead track to go with? It sounded like. Like, I don't know. Like of all the, for a long time it was going to be colours, um, but when we wrote lipstick, even before we took it to Liam, we thought like this sounds like a great pop song, um, and we want that to lead the charge, basically. Um, so I don't know. Like as soon as it was written, we just kind of thought, well, that's one. Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> What made you pick Liam to produce? Because obviously there's millions of people out there. How did that come about? Yeah, so um, I was studying media in college, and uh, we were supposed to be part, getting involved as an extracurricular activity <laughs> <laughs> uh, with uh, the Access All Areas Music Festival, which Brendan Moon is putting together. Okay. Brendan Moon, the guy that discovered Palonatini, yeah. as a name drop for you. <laughs> <laughs> Best pal. Exactly, me and Paolo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brendan uh, was putting on this festival. He came in and had a chat with us. I ended up speaking away to Brendan. He told us about the studio. I came in. Uh, turned out I'd actually met Liam before at Transmit last year. <laughs> so, uh, got to see Confidence Man uh, through mutual friends. I knew Sean, his brother, from playing gigs at King Tut's. And uh, we just hit it off, became really good pals. And uh, we just thought, well, why don't we just record with these guys? And um, yeah. That's, that's, how, that's how it went down, yeah. What about the hard rock thing? How did you get involved with that? Dan put us in for it. He saw it on Facebook they put us in for yeah. it. And of, I think it was like 8,000 people. 8,000 submissions or something like that. We got one. We got chosen for four in Scotland. Yeah. So even to get to the stage we got to, it was amazing. It was amazing. It was um, such a good night. And I could not believe how many, like 90% of that building were there to see you guys. It was crazy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I've yet to actually be to at a proper gig. But I feel like I got a wee bit of a, a snippet of what the fan base is like. That was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely mental. What's a typical Glasgow show then? Kind of the best reference for it is the last time we played King Cuts. Uh-huh. So we played with a good friend in the Go Velvet. Um, and it was their headline. And so we were main support. And basically the room was full of Chris Gregg and the Merchants fans and Indigo Velvet fans. <laughs> and the whole room went absolutely nuts. Like, like absolutely <laughs> nuts. We've never had a full room sing our old songs back to us before. Amazing. And that was, that was kind of the vibe that we got. But yeah. in between every single song, we got the Chris Gregg and the Merchants chant going. <laughs> Uh, Are you going to give me an example of that? Chris Gregg and the Merchants, na 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 na. Yep, that's, <laughs> that's the one. one. I'm sure you remember very well. Flashbacks, flashbacks. <laughs> so, um, basically, every time we finished a song that started, and I could not get two words in edgeways. Um, for the whole half an hour that we were on, that was just all you heard in between songs. That was a really good night, though. Yeah, it was good fun. It like proved that you already were quite a strong staple part in. Glasgow music scene because there was so many people there mm-hmm. like to support you. How do you think that came about? Was it just like social media, word of mouth? How do I say this without saying like I'm doing my own horn? You like to. <laughs> um, it's hard work. Yeah. To be honest, um, we've been doing it for a long time. I started five years ago on my own. Oh, really? 
Yeah, <laughs> um, the band came on board 2016. Okay. Lineups changed since then, but we've been we've just been working our bums off really. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing at it. Mm-hmm. Constantly. What made um, you decide that you wanted the band back in? Well, I was gonna. I wanted. To, I wanted to release something, and I did. I didn't want it to be solo. I wanted a band. So I got a band in. And so I got Chris, who's in the band now. A guy called Gary Gilmore, who was in a band called Fluorescent Hearts. Okay, yeah. Um, the keyboard player from Fluorescent Hearts, Stephen. <laughs> and a guy who actually recorded that EP that I did at the time, which is on the old Spotify, but not on the current Spotify. Okay. Um, called Blair Hutchison. Okay. And um, so he recorded it, he played bass. And basically we decided, right, let's launch this with a, as a show. Okay. We'll put a show together, and then after that, we'll see how it goes. Okay. After we played the show, we sold out the Mash House, very first headline show ever. <laughs> um, and it was just, I mean, it was all family and friends, and then people well, going... Still so yeah, good. totally, but yeah. Pe- people going to see the other bands and stuff, but it was still like yeah. a jam-packed yeah. Mash House. Amazing. And then um, I went down really well. Gary said, I want to continue doing this, this is amazing. Um, Chris, he'd already decided, because we were already the best pals by that point. <laughs> um, Stephen and Blair couldn't do it. So we got another bassist in, Donald, who's in the band now. He went to college with Chris. Okay. And then after a while, Gary ended up leaving. Uh, so we got Dan in. And that was just through Facebook ads. Um, and now we're just four best bows. But, um, yeah, I, just, I, w- I always wanted to be in a band from, a, from when I was a wee boy. Yeah, I got into, like, solo stuff like Charlie Simpson, Ed Sheeran, like, loads of stuff when I was, like, in my teenage years. So I, I gave that a go. I gigged at that for a while. And I, was, I still always wanted to be in a band. So I got the band on board. And then we just kind of kept doing it, and then we rebranded last year to Chris Gregg and the Merchants. <laughs> Who decided it was and the Merchants? It was actually Dan's idea for the name really? because, <clears throat> well, <laughs> well, we all like a drink, you see. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we've met in a pub. Exactly. Really? The best place for an interview. <laughs> um, and. Um, me and Dan were in the car I think we'd take Donald home and then Dan was going to take me home and then we're in the car and me and Dan were talking about this idea for our names and Dan just said I really like the idea of Chris Gregg and the merchants because we're all bevy merchants <laughs> and it just kind of stuck and although for a while it was like the worst name ever why? it was Chris Gregg and the Vagabond 3 and it just does not oh, work that, at that all Chris well. Gregg and the Merchant really yeah, was that, the one to go with yeah. Yeah, definitely better good choice good move <laughs> thanks Dan <laughs> what's next what are you guys in? Uh, 21st of July we're playing King Tut's first Yay. headline there dream come true Woo-hoo. wanted that since I since I saw Charlie Simpson there years and years ago <laughs> um, yeah so We've got King Tut's, 21st of July, part of the Summer Nights Festival. And then after that, the weekend after that, we're going down to England. We're playing Kendall Collin at the Woodland Stage. Yeah, that's also something massive for us because it's our first gig in England and um, it's on such a big stage for us. Um, and then after that, we're playing Sound in the Sands in our drossing. Um, now, this is a massive one for me personally. So my family are massive fans of Hipsway yep. and Hue and Cry. Yep. So we're going to be on the same lineup as them. We're supporting Hue and Cry basically, Amazing. which is That's so phenomenal. Cool. One of our family tunes is "Looking for Linda" by Hue and Cry. Um, <laughs> so it's just. It's so that's going to be our mental family day. Uh, if they come, they, be, they, they better cut. You're coming. Are you, are you going to get them on the guest list or are you going to make them buy tickets? This well, I mean, I'm not at a stage where I'm making enough money to give them guest lists. So. <laughs> Buy your tickets now. <laughs> so, yeah, um, we've got that. And then, I think that's us so far. We're hoping to get a UK tour at the end of the year, but we'll see because we do want to kind of go back to writing as well and kind of rethink and kind of have a little think about next year too. So, yeah. we're hoping if we can get a wee UK tour for a week or something at the end of the year, that would be amazing. Get some more gigs in England. Yeah. Uh, kind of just get more people listening to us basically.